Uh, now we have Minority Leader Senator Tello Tidewe. Senator, is that you? Hey, good morning, Kristen. Good morning, Sabrina. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> what a night. night last yeah. night. Well, you hung <laughs> over or something from the fighting? <laughs> But yeah. could it have ended earlier when uh, BBMR and DOA says uh, we're going to use CARES Act funding? Absolutely. It could have ended. I mean, the one word that, that it kept resonating in my head yesterday was this is so frustrating. Mm -hmm. I was speaking to legal earlier that day, and I said, you know, if just every, everything would be transparent, the rules of engagement were followed, if they would let us know what bills were going on the session agenda before the session so we can do our due diligence and if they can just allow us enough time to ask questions then the frustrating would stop but most especially the rules of engagement i'm sorry but a point of personal privilege this was brought up before with the speaker allowing you know senator so, to say that right and, and per, point of personal privilege the, the the ruling is that if it's directed solely at you at you, and it wasn't directed at, at uh, anybody in particular. He, w he felt he was being sabotaged, and she just felt compelled to uh, put her hand to a heart and saying, oh, my God, it hurt my feelings. I'm like, oh, get real. I almost fractured my eyeballs last night. We're, just for people who are listening, this we're talking about uh, Bill 9, right? This is Senator Jim Moylan's bill. So yeah, we'll back to yeah, GRT. let's start on Bill 9. That's mm -hmm. the one that, that, that was a total uh, sabotage. What was ironic was um, when he placed his bill on the session agenda, it, w it would have been the last one on the agenda. So something was going on because you can see it when they all huddle. The, i I got to come up with the name of those particular eight individuals who are, you know, the yes men, the yes soldiers. But they get together and they decide, you know, how, how it's going to play out without letting most of not most of us but a few of us not know definitely not the republicans know and a couple of democrats they don't want to let them know because god forbid we want transparency you know and everybody know what's moving forward so i think at that moment they decided okay well let's just set bill 367 aside and then um i don't know why mary asked to have her bill set aside it had nothing to do with um any kind of uh, committee of the whole it could have gone forward but no, that bill was set aside too, just so that Jim Moylan could put his bill aside, which, I mean, bill up first, which he wasn't even ready for because we thought his bill was going to be last on the agenda and he was working on the amendments. Because you all know that this bill was introduced almost 17 months ago. Yeah, and I thought and it was... So a lot of it's changed. Or, a I lot has changed. I thought it was interesting, Senator, when um, the mm -hmm. rules, rules chair had said there's no conspiracy. The bill was introduced in January, but I think that... <laughs> You know, uh, a bill that was introduced in January, only hitting the session floor a year and a half later. Right, it right. kind of maybe looks a little bit like a conspiracy to keep the minority uh, bills, you know, from seeing the light yeah. of day. I mean, it, it is exactly. what it is, right? Am I wrong? Exactly. And, you know, it, it, am I wrong, it, Senator, it, or no? It's absolutely right. And when the, the volume is turned down... <laughs> And a lot of times I'm trying to keep, you know, press the, the record button just so that you can hear what's going on. I have nothing to hide. I'm, I've been a person who's so transparent. What you see is what you get. And the only thing that, that really frustrates me more than anything is that they're not playing fair. They're playing these games in the legislature, which takes up 90% of the time because half the time we're watching the daggers coming from our, you know, from behind us. And it's, it, it's useless to have this kind of petty games going on in the legislature. We're supposed to be working together. Instead, you get comments from the back when you're speaking of someone, you know, pouting and huffing like a spoiled little kid. And that's Regine Bisco Lee. I'm going to say it straight out. I have nothing to hide. No, I've heard and from other senators that... Uh, that Therese, um, and you get Selena Nelson, who sits there clapping like this is a, sh a show and it's not this is there's decorum in here after someone speaks and it, it, it just becomes too much like a playground and it needs to stop the rules of engagement every one of them should actually go not to an only an ethics uh, committee but also a, a um, you know rules of engagement on the session floor read your Mason's manual but one of the biggest things that happened last week that was so frustrating is it, is moving forward with another bill um, regarding the rental, the landlords. Uh, hold on, Senator, real quick. Uh, we're KUAM FM and Agatha Guam. 
Again, this is the KUAM News Takeover, Guam's favorite containing COVID. Uh, good morning to our viewers on KUAM TV 11. Good morning, Guam. On the line now, we have one of the, uh, I like to call you one of the grown-up senators at the, the Guam <laughs> Congress Hall. Uh, oh, minority. that's unfortunate. I'm <laughs> grown up. Yeah, I'd like to be. I really do. But, you know, sometimes I, I'm, I'm only human. It does push your button. You know, you try to punch your your mouth and say nothing. Yeah, but, but, but you know, you Senator, we, we, we played a clip of you, uh, and we're going to play it again when we do the news. But uh, you're right. There was, uh, and you called out Senator Virginia Bisco Lee for uh, kind of mouthing off off mic right uh behind oh, you yeah, yeah. and this it is something that a lot. i've heard you know at watching session that is kind of routine for her is that how, yeah. have you ever had that before where you just get a senator who's just wise you know wise cracking or you know hating oh, or whatever you want to call it's, it it's the it's the two of them in the back it's regime biscoli and Tulina nelson you know when we're trying to you know state our case you know debate the issue and they're making comments back there you it's, it's just very childish you know so they're like those two are, are they like the two senator are they like the people in the back of the bus you know that <laughs> when i used to ride the bus well, I, there are people I, in the I, back I, they're always the ones who are like teasing everyone and bullying people so that's that's I, senator know, regina and, and vice speaker talina you're saying those are the, the i two. have this one uh, i have this one constituent that keeps you know, it's texting me saying the mean girls. It's the mean girls. <laughs> I definitely, I got to find that movie and watch that because it's, it's just to see, you know, what the, if it's two to four because yeah. they're called the mean girls. And I, I you know, I, I got to disagree with what Senator Shelton said because I don't think it's the debate is not heated because, you know, some of you guys are on one side and some are the others. The debate is heated because, you know, they're cutting you guys off. They're, Using yeah. uh, misusing the rules. I mean, you know, yeah, are there even rules, rules or is it jungle rules? Because it looks like the rules of the oh, legislature yeah. are jungle rules. Well, you know, at the beginning uh, of the legislature in, in this 35th Guam legislature, I had mentioned a couple of times, no, this is not going to happen while I'm sitting here. If someone is speaking, let that person talk. Quit coming in with a point of information when your point of information is actually you're debating. You're not giving a point of information. You're giving your opinion. And then point of personal privilege, this kept happening at the beginning of the year. So, you know, it, it, you're thinking, okay, do you just let this continue to go on or give them their own medicine? So the only thing to do to fight back is give them their own medicine. This is what it's like when you're being interrupted, when you're trying to say something. This is what it's like when you're abusing uh, your right as a senator on the floor, whether, when to speak and when not to speak. You know, you're abusing it. So... It, it's like I said; these guys need to go to school and <laughs> learn the rules of engagement. Senator, and, and we're respectful of each each other, and right. nobody yeah. seems to be. But there's, there was a lot of bills on here: the the sabotage bill that we're calling uh, Jim Moylan's bill. What do What sabotage. do you make of that, though? Because uh, there, I mean, is it, it's a valid point? I think that if you had a bill that was just uh, Senator Moylan just not expecting. It because I would think that if I had a bill that the Democrats were, you know, trying to keep from hitting the session floor, that in the event it was, I would make sure that all my ducks were in a row and my amendments were there and the effective dates were changed. Because I don't want to let Senator Moylan completely off the hook because, hello, this is he's been asking to lower the BPT since ever since. And so you would think that when you finally get the shot, I mean, whether so you're going to go at lunch, wh right. when, so whether you're going to go, Senator, at five o'clock in the afternoon or ten in the morning, I think when they finally call you up, the you know that you got you just got to be ready. You're ready and, to go. Yeah, and that and that's a, the fault of Senator Moylan. I mean, I, I God, I, I mean, <laughs> he's that's always a, complaining about his bills not seeing the light of day, and then they finally let one out, and he's just not ready. He, he's not ready because there was a lot of changes that need to be right. be, be done sure, and then sure, sure. you know if you're looking at trying to utilize your time wisely you figure 367 is going to have a long debate because that's a appropriation bill going into the committee of the whole and then you have another bill coming for you have a little bit of time um it's been awarded time has been awarded count in countless times uh, during <laughs> session to allow these senators to put amendments in. And, right. And point point of personal privilege, Senator. Point <laughs> of personal privilege. Um, and, and you said 
people frustrated because we keep taking recesses because they're allowing you know other senators to take their time putting their amendments through. Right. So when the senator asked for a little bit more time, so all he asked for was just what they did. They asked to set their bill aside to, to be the last on the agenda, Bill six, I mean three six seven. Right. Then the next one asked to set their bill aside, you know, uh, to the end of the agenda. So that's what Jim Moynihan did. Well, he asked to set his bill aside to the end of the agenda, so making it back to Bill 36. But they wouldn't allow him to do it. Oh, no, 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 Senator Moynihan, you've got to do yours now. No, there's a motion uh, to set it uh, to be last or set it aside and an objection. And never in the years that I've been uh, in the legislature or had oversaw the legislature in the governor's office did I ever see an objection when some uh, when a senator wanted to set his bill aside i've never seen that and i talked to legal i go did you ever hear anything like she said never in her history has she ever heard that as well so it really was a setup it was a sabotage for him not to have his amendments ready to go um and give enough time for him to put put it out there it, it was total to sabotage right well the senator so a point a point of personal privilege um I, I think you're right because we look at Bill 367. I mean, this is a bill that hit the floor and it was using all local funding. This was And no one said, oh, let's withdraw it and let me change everything up to put the CARES Act. I mean, this was something that you guys discussed and it totally evolved. I mean, the funding source totally evolved, but no one said, oh, um, the, you don't have time to do amendments or, you know. I, I have to say, this is one of the most fishiest. <laughs> legislation placed out there when you have bbmr coming up there saying that oh he just this bill was just introduced conveniently answering the question um of i just heard about this bill but not really saying i just heard about it he craftedly said the bill was just introduced this morning and it, it doesn't that come on you guys this was a setup totally for for uh, Senator Shelton to have her day in the sun. You know, we all know that the governor can do this. And in fact, it's important and it needs to be done now so the governor can do this now. And then for her, the, it was just so frustrating. Yeah, you're right, because the governor could do it now and they should have done it. And it's a huge win. Like, Adelute would look so right. good. Everyone is, oh, yeah. now, all everyone is saying is we're sitting on, you know, what is it, Bree, like 80, 90 million dollars in federal CARES Act funds. We're just sitting on it. Exactly. We're sitting on it. It's million. just collecting interest or whatever. And um, yes, this would have been a huge win for Adeloupe. They could have had a press conference about it. They could have. And, and for Lester Carlson to mention, when we talked about, I had a copy actually of the budget of the 117 million of CARES Act funding and the budget in front of me. And, and Senator Trichelai, he asked the question before I could, but where are you going to take this money from the CARES Act? Oh, and, and his response was there are certain uh, uh, budgeted areas that need to be spent right away that probably will not be spent before the December 2020 deadline. And we can use money from this area and uh, move money around this. You know. So I thought, okay, well, then just do it. You know why? And it was mentioned several times that you have the opportunity, uh, the administration has the opportunity to do it now and not wait for this legislation. As far as like putting together a uh, rules and regs and how to do this, well, they did that with the Salapi program. They did that with the other business, small business programs. They put those rules and regs together in the applications that are needed for people to fill out. So you you, you, you think to do that? Point of personal privilege, Senator. Point of personal privilege. You think oh, that... Point of information. Point oh, of information, Chris. You're out of order. <laughs> no, so you're basically saying that because Senator Shelton was the only senator to vote against the Bill 333 transparency override, and that in exchange for that, she's now become the governor's querida, and they're going to do this whole program, and then she's going to be passing out the checks when it... Uh, goes in law. So you're just basically saying this was the trade-off that she got for for being the only senator in the Guam legislature who didn't uh, vote for that transparency override. Uh, What's the trade-off? One is two. <laughs> one plus one is two. <laughs> Do the math. I mean, look at all the scenarios that are surrounding this. Right. You know, um, 
you know, I, I think the pe- people out there, they have their opinion. They're listening to what goes out there. And I'm, I'm so happy you guys are putting it out there as well. And finally, people are listening to the legislature. They're going on the legislative channel, listening to what's going on in the legislature. And they're putting two and two together or one plus one. or They're putting it together and making their own assessment. As far as I'm concerned, all I know is that this bill could have been done, uh, should not even been in the legislature, should have been done, you know, three weeks ago. And for them to say that, oh, it's something we just thought about now, that's that's not true. I mean, that just I kind of that's not true. reinforces the, the perception just that they're, they're oh flying gosh. by the seat of their pants. It's like, what are we going to do today? Let's do something with the, the, uh, the teenagers. Exactly. Are there a lot of teenagers? Okay, you let's know, do... I have, to admit, though, <laughs> I have to admit, you know, public hearing, we have a hard time getting BBMR coming to a public hearing. Right, I made Sometimes this point. DOA. So I was really happy. You know, first I was saying, hey, have a public hearing like you did on the double pay bill. You quickly, you know, I asked Joe, you quickly had those public hearings. Have one on Bill 637. So we can really go out and, and talk about this bill and find out where did it come from and is there enough money and funding to go. But actually I was quite taken that, you know, the Committee of the Whole was a much better route because a lot of things were exposed on the finances out there that we've been trying to get answers for. Right, yeah. And one of them is the big war claim scenario that we found out last night. And the other one that nobody's really looking at is the rainy day fund. Now, I remember, and I even went to Therese after this, said, hey, do you remember when Director Burns was here not too long ago? This was before the COVID, I think somewhere in January when we had him. And he mentioned to us that there was no money in the rainy day fund at all. And that moving forward, there hasn't been any uh, opportunity to, to fund the rainy day fund, especially when COVID started, you know, and they were, were, they were definitely not able to set money aside knowing the crisis ahead of them. So how did they have all of a sudden $3 million in the rainy day fund? So Teresa and I were just looking at each other. Well, that's one. And two, how are you able to take $8.4 million out of the uh, war claims to pay tax refunds when there, it, it's, it's definitely a, an account that needs uh, authority by the legislature in order right. to appropriate. I think that that's the problem when you have a Democratic supermajority and you got, you know, six or seven senators who, when Adeloup says jump, they jump. They don't care if they hit their head on the ceiling. They're just going to jump. Yeah, so there's just no, there's no accountability. The legislature, with the exception of a handful of senators, I believe is totally compromised and controlled by the executive branch. It's, it's frustrating. And really, though, I mean... <laughs> I mean, you guys are the ones that are going to have to face the music come election time because people are going to be voting with a vengeance. Yeah, and, and you know, it's, it's sad, you know, that voting there are going to be vengeance. innocent people, innocent people that are going to be affected from this because, you know, you're guilty by association, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But one thing I did want to bring up is that um, Senator Luis Munoz made such a, um, a great statement uh, after my amendment to build a uh, success. Uh, 367 didn't pass, which was striking out all the general fund appropriation, the special fund, striking out the um, rainy day fund, and and as well as the war claims, because it's obvious they said there was no money in the general fund, there's no money in the special fund, they had $3 million, they said, in the rainy day fund, and they're already spending the war claims money. So what funding is there? What funding is there to to, to fund this, this bill? Oh, we're going to use CARES Act. So I made sure to scratch out all those other A, B, C, and D, and then incorporate into my legislation that CARES Act funding shall be used for this for this uh, bill, 367. But oh no, we had a huge debate on a, a, a 1978 opinion on using federal funds. This is CARES Act. Now, I was hoping the senator, I mean, the speaker would come back with something straight from the White House saying, no, CARES Act has to be utilized by the governor and the legislature has no authority to appropriate any of that money. So when my bill, my amendment failed using CARES Act and the argument to put that in my amendment, they turned around and put Amanda's amendment and still incorporated the CARES Act. That's when Senator Louise said, well, why is it not okay for Senator Tidegree's amendment, the previous amendment, having CARES Act in it, 
And now it's okay for Senator Shelton to have the CARES Act amendment that's what i mean it's just so petty it's like because the republican did the amendment they they voted down but then when the democrat does it yeah no but at the end of the day we don't even need the bill yeah that's what's funny is this is like senator Terlani said it's a charade really out loop like what are you guys thinking down there you need to give out this money two weeks ago what are you doing what are you guys doing exactly sabrina there should be even more there should be, there should be assistance. Hey, no. um, Senator, there, let me get some free ideas. You got your pen and paper? I got it. There needs to be it. assistance for private sector employees who lost their jobs or were furloughed. We need to give them two, 300 bucks each, some kind of immediate assistance while we wait for Dave Delasola to figure out how to work the DOL computer. Um, uh, we yeah. also need to give relief and assistance to people who were not able to pay their rent People who are now facing evictions, we need assistance, um, you know, for landlords. Uh, there's just a ton of stuff that you can use this CARES Act funding, including absolutely helping the homeless. They can use the CARES Act funding to help the homeless. Why don't we exactly. give some of these homeless people temporary funds so they can get emergency housing? There's just, and I don't understand. I mean, we're just coming out of left field with this Mangoffa thing, and we're giving out money that should have been given out a long time ago. And I don't think our people, especially those ones that we're trying to help with this bill. I don't think they have the time to keep waiting for assistance while, you know, we jump through all these legislative hoops mm -hmm. so, you know, certain senators can look good in, in an election year. I, I wish I could have had the opportunity to go into the Speaker's office last night and talk to Carlo Branch, who was sitting there in the Speaker's office. I went back there and I'm like, what is Carlo Branch doing here? He's getting comfortable. That's what he's doing. <laughs> I'm like, okay, you got the administration. Oh, my God, it's true to form. This yeah, and then you know, about, you know I, I, a, a feel good bill for a certain senator, you know, and and he's been sent down to make sure you know it happens. Strong arm no, Carlo, thing, right? go tell the governor to make it happen right now. You don't need legislation, and you need to come up with other programs to to help utilize that 117 million dollars right. that's been given to help the people of Guam. I mean, it's and a it's a no brainer a perspective too. On a business, well, by the way, you mentioned something about DOL. And what is Saipan? I, I heard something about Saipan is already um, ready and up and running on their unemployment. Well, their internet's faster up there. <laughs> oh, their internet? Because they got less people using it. Less people using it. No, I don't it. know. You're right. It, it does seem like Saipan is kind of... Uh, <laughs> 4,000 individuals who made mistakes on application. That could have been taken care of right away provide these individuals who need assistance and filling it out right. Why did they make this so difficult? They hired a, a company from off-island to put this application together. I just don't understand why they made it so difficult. You know, user-friendly, you know, and it's just 4,000. It breaks my heart. Can you yeah. imagine spending yeah. 45 minutes on online trying to fill out this application and then it, it's booted out because it, it was it was done, you know, there was a mistake made. And mm. half the time, I mean, I'm no computer genius. I know a little bit, but mm. um, I know it gets difficult online when you're asking certain questions and don't know how to have somebody help you to, to fill out these applications. Well, yeah, they are going to have people uh, available to help next week. Yeah, I think they're going to start oh. applying for Pula on the 17th. Oh but, right. but I think uh, Dave had mentioned that he was actually working with Saipan, I think, if I can recall. We've heard a lot from um, Dave. Dave. Yeah. Yeah. Heard so there's nothing lot. new from Tom Tomas. Just said there's nothing new right, uh, okay. from what they reported yesterday. Senator, we got to well, run and uh, do the news. Yeah, we're we're going to play the clip. So if you want to tune and, and in. When, well, yes, I will, I'll tune in. But one thing I. I mean, I know you say, lived so, it, so, Senator, but <laughs> it's always different when you watch it. Well, sometimes when you're in a heated moment and you're, you're frustrated and upset, you don't even remember what you said. You know, mm -hmm. you're just so angry. But, uh, yeah, I'll, I actually am reviewing tape, listening to what B.B. Marr and DOA said, because there's some things that need to be investigated right, right. now. Ooh, well, you know, that yeah. that. But I want to also let everyone know that, you know, like I said last night, someone who was calling me, just frustrated as I was, and I said, don't worry, you know, uh, we're going to continue to fight, even though there were very few in there that are trying to do what's best for the people of Guam and, and stop all this gains in the legislature and just try to move forward. We're going to continue to do that, no matter what. Sometimes you feel like you're such the underdog here, and you're trying so hard. Uh, people are worried that you're going to give up. But no, I'm, I'm going to keep fighting.
to the very end, you know, to make sure that um, everybody has that transparency that we are looking for, and most especially what's best for the people of Guam and helping the people of Guam. Businesses too, because we need those jobs open again. Yeah. We well, need to get people to be sustainable. Point of personal a privilege, um, Senator. Yes, uh, sir. Wash your hands. <laughs> we'll do. Thanks for the call. We'll take care, Sabrina. All right, Thank you me. take care. For all your pushing on this. All Thank right. you. Take Appreciate care. It. Bye. Okay. 822. Uh, good morning. Let's just get right into the news, uh, Bree. We're going to have Sergeant Paul Tapao, the Guam Police Department, on okay. uh, to do our weekly update on uh, crime news at 822. Again, the show proudly brought to you by the Bank of Guam, Coast 360, Calvo Enterprises, Ambrose Inc., and IT&E. It is the KUAM News Takeover of Guam's favorite containing COVID.